Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from e Get Tech. This is going to be my very first unboxing for the year 2022. And this time I'm going to be starting off with a mid-range phone from Samsung. So here on my table, I've got the Samsung Galaxy A52s 5G version. And as you can see, it's in that awesome purple color. So what are we waiting for guys? Let's get this unboxing started. Alright, so looking at the packaging, doesn't seem to be anything special. So you've got the Galaxy A52s 5G and the picture of the phone on the cover and on the side as well. You get Galaxy A52s and you've got here the actual model of the Samsung Galaxy phone as well as the color and the RAM and storage configuration. So let's go ahead and open up the box. Okay, so box is open. Let's see what's in here. We've got the SIM ejector tool. And here it is guys. The customary clear jelly case that Samsung is usually packaging with their phones nowadays. And let's see what else is in here. Okay, so I've got package content. So it does show you how to install a SIM card. I think most of us are aware and already know how to do that. And you've got the warranty card and that's pretty much it guys. So let's put this aside and here's the phone. It does say Samsung Galaxy A52 S 5G. It has an Infinity O display. It doesn't use a notch. It basically has a punch hole in the top. So the phone has a quad camera setup and pretty surprising feature here guys is that this is water and dust resistant and it's IP67 rated. And like I said, this is the awesome purple color. So let's put that aside for now. So it got Samsung Care Plus if you want additional insurance for your phone. Got a couple of stickers here. Whether these four do not accept if the seal is broken. Shouldn't this be covering the box? Yeah, huh. why is this inside? So you've got your USB C to USB A charging cable. It's white, nothing special. And you've got the charging brick. So this is a white colored Samsung charging brick, and this is rated at 25 watts. You can actually go from 0 to 50 in around 30 minutes. That should be quick enough, but definitely not as fast as some of the other phones I have featured on the channel. Okay, and there doesn't seem to be any headphones or headset included in the box. So does that mean the phone doesn't have a headphone jack? Oh, it does. So I guess Samsung is actually trying to cut down costs by not including headset with their phones, but I'm not sure that the headset or the earphones that they usually bundle with their mid-range phones actually cost that much, so I'm pretty surprised that this one doesn't come with it. Okay, the back is definitely plastic. I guess Samsung is trying to move away from the shiny backs that we've gotten used to, and those are very bad fingerprint magnets. So it is plastic, but they're not trying to make it look like glass. So I'm not going to be calling this a glastic back, but a plastic back. All right, here's the screen and you can see there is a punch hole right there. And out of the box, it does seem like it does come with a pre-installed film protector. So at least you've got protection on the display right out of the box. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to boot up, Alright, so as I was saying, this is a Super AMOLED display. It can go up to 120 hertz, and the maximum brightness that it can get is 800 nits and that is in high brightness mode. So I've set it up to max and it does get pretty bright guys. I still believe that Samsung actually makes some of the best displays on the market and even on the mid-range phone, this display is pretty impressive. So let's go to the settings and see the display here guys. So motion smoothness is set at high, so you've got standard 60 hertz. It's not as smooth, but when you turn on high, yeah, there you go guys. It's a lot, lot smoother. And also another pleasant surprise here guys is that the display has Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection. So even on a mid-range phone, it is pretty well protected. But of course, if you know me guys, I still would recommend that you get a proper tempered glass. And this time, since it doesn't have curved uh, sides, so not like some of the flagship phones that Samsung makes, you don't have to worry about getting any of those fancy white stone tempered glass that will cost you an arm and a leg. So for the build and the design, so you've got pretty much the left side bare of anything. And all your buttons are on the right side. You've got the volume up, the volume down, and the power button. And at the bottom, you've got the USB-C port, the headphone jack, your speakers. And at the top, it's pretty much 
pair, you've just got the SIM tray and your mic. So the Samsung Galaxy A52 S 5G comes in a couple of variants. So you, for the 128 gig of storage, you can get 4, 6, and 8 RAM variants. And for the 256, it's only 6 and 8. The storage is actually still UFS 2.1. That is a bit of a letdown for me, guys, because I've gotten used to phones that use UFS 3.0 and 3.1. But I guess I might have to use the phone as my daily driver and see if I can actually notice the difference between that UFS 2.1 and, and the UFS 3.0 or 3.1 storage on other phones. So as you can see on the back, it does have four cameras. So this is a quad camera setup. Primary lens is 64 megapixel and it is a wide camera. You've got a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 5 megapixel macro, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. So that is primarily used for taking portrait shots. I would still personally prefer a telephoto lens, but I guess a macro lens is a lot cheaper to produce and put on the phone. The selfie shooter, on the other hand, is pretty decent at 32 megapixels, and both the front and the back cameras support 4K video at 30 frames per second, as well as 1080p at 60 frames per second and 30 FPS. And it does have gyro EIS or electronic image stabilization. So you don't have to worry about shaky shots when using the phone. I'm definitely going to take sample shots with this phone and see how well it compares with some of the older flagship phones from Samsung. And I guess you noticed it doesn't have a side fingerprint so that tells me this has an under display fingerprint sensor. So let me try to set that up right now. So the fingerprint sensor is a bit lower than I'm used to. Uh, they could have put it a bit higher. It seems to be scanning pretty well guys. So let's try out the fingerprint sensor. Unlock speed is pretty good, so I am impressed. It actually unlocks faster than my S21 Ultra to be honest. So in terms of the battery, the phone is pretty light and you're not gonna have a hard time holding it long term. So even if you're watching movies, it doesn't get unnecessarily heavy. So you're not gonna get any cramps holding the phone for extended periods. The battery is a pretty decent 4500mAh and as I mentioned earlier, it does have a 25W fast charger and can charge 0 to 50 in 30 minutes. I definitely have to do a separate test to see how long it will take to charge from 0 to 100. Now in terms of the color guys, the one I've got here is the awesome purple but it does come in awesome black, awesome white, and awesome mint. So the awesome mint is actually reserved for the A52s 5G and I'm going to tell you about that a bit later but I forgot to mention that the chipset on this phone is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 778 5G and it does provide pretty good performance. So for those who are in the market for a Samsung phone or a mid-range Samsung phone, you might be confused because there's actually three different models of the Samsung Galaxy A52. So you've got the regular A52 or the one that just has 4G or LTE. Then they released a 5G model, which is the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G. And this is the latest one, which is the Samsung Galaxy A52s 5G. So what are the difference, guys? On the regular or the 4G A52, you only get a 90Hz screen. And the A52 5G and the A52s 5G both get 120Hz. But that's not the only difference guys. The 4G version of the A52 has a Snapdragon 720G. The A52 5G has a Snapdragon 750G. While the A52 S 5G which I'm holding right here has a Snapdragon 778G. Now in terms of benchmarks and performance, the one that performs the highest is the A52 S 5G. And one other difference is that the A52 4G and 5G version still has the awesome blue while the A52 S 5G takes out the blue color and gives you their trademark awesome mint. But in my case, I just got the awesome purple. In terms of pricing, the A52 4G is the cheapest at around 19,000 Philippine Peso, the A52 5G at around 24,000 Pesos, and the A52 S 5G is the most expensive, the one that I've got here at 23,000, and the 256 version at 25,000. So it is 1,000 Philippine Peso more expensive than the A52 5G that also has the 256 GB of storage. Now, of course, before I do a couple of benchmarks on this thing, I'm going to be testing out the speaker system. So let me connect it to the Wi-Fi. Let me see if there is dark mode on this. Since this is an AMOLED display, it should have dark mode. There you go. All right, connect it. Let's open up YouTube. Seems to be some updates there, guys. Let me restart the phone real quick. So while waiting for that to update, guys, let's check out the SIM tray. 
So it is a hybrid tray so you can either put two SIMs or a SIM in a micro SD card. And you've got a rubber ring around the SIM holder so that actually plays a big part in making this phone an IP67 rated phone. So you don't have to worry about the phone getting wet. So let me test out one of my SIM cards over here and see if we can get a 5G signal. Okay, we got a SIM card there. Of course, I want to test out the sound first. Another pleasant surprise guys, this has a stereo setup. So you've got sound coming from the bottom speaker and you've got sound coming from your earpiece. So even if you cover the bottom, there should still be some sound coming out from the left side. Sounds not too shabby guys, it does get pretty loud. There is a hint of bass and because it has a stereo setup, you don't have to worry about the sound getting blocked when you're playing mobile games in landscape mode. Now of course, since this is a mid-range phone, your, one of your concerns might be how well will it be able to play some of the latest games out right now. So I'm going to be installing one of the more demanding games which is Genshin Impact and see how well the phone can handle that. As I mentioned before, I actually put a SIM card in here and let's see if I can actually get a 5G signal. There you have it guys, 5G symbol appearing right on the top so it does have 5G capability in my area. There is a bit of a stutter at 60 frames per second but not too noticeable. Alright guys, so Genshin Impact is perfectly playable at 60 frames per second but you have to turn some of the graphics down like render resolution, shadow quality, put some on medium, should be good to go. But it's also perfectly playable at 30 frames per second and if you keep it at medium settings. It's set to low at, at, as default and if you set that to 60, the gameplay would be even better. And good thing is Genshin is such a good looking game, even if you set the graphics setting at low, it still looks pretty good and what's important is you don't get any frame drops especially when you're doing any boss fights. So there you go, I just did a quick test. I'm going to be doing a couple of benchmarks on a separate video so we'll see how well this performs against other phones in its price range. I guess I'll go ahead and end this quick unboxing and initial impressions on the Samsung Galaxy A52s 5G phone. I would love to hear your thoughts on the comment section down below and if this is a piece of tech that you want to get. But until then, a sub would be massively appreciated. Please like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification, and see you all in my next one.